Hi, I'm Lisa of Simply Bowen Therapy. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about multiple sclerosis. Uh, it's something that is kind of close to my heart because it was through a colleague with multiple sclerosis that I was first introduced to Bowen. First time ever. I'd had a minor car accident, I'd had some whiplash, my neck was sore, but doctors just weren't interested in treating me. Seeing me in pain, my colleague had suggested I give Bowen a try. Of course I did, there's no looking back now. She had multiple sclerosis and while she was in the early stages at that time, the Bowen was really helping to give her relief from a number of the, the symptoms that she was experiencing. And since becoming a Bowen therapist myself, I've seen again how Bowen can help people that are suffering with multiple sclerosis. So what is multiple sclerosis? Multiple sclerosis, or MS for short, is a condition that impacts the body's central nervous system. Multiple means many. Um, and sclerosis is from the Greek, meaning scars. So multiple sclerosis involves many scars or lesions. And in the case of multiple sclerosis, those lesions form within the nervous system. Nerve fibers in the nervous system normally transmit messages throughout the body, to and from the brain. The nerve fibers are wrapped in a fatty sheath called myelin, which insulates the nerve fibers and allows signals to pass without interference. In the case of MS, this myelin sheath is damaged or destroyed that interferes with or blocks the nerve impulses between the brain and the spinal cord. Multiple sclerosis is widely believed to be an autoimmune disease. In a properly functioning immune system, harmful cells or viruses are identified and removed. With MS, the immune system's defensive cells mistakenly attack the myelin sheath. Inflammation occurs when that immune system continues to attack and damage one area, and that inflammation may result in an MS attack or relapse. There's over two and a half million people globally diagnosed with MS, and over 23,000 of those are in Australia. MS can impact people of all ages, although most are diagnosed between ages 20 and 40. 75% of those with MS are women. Interestingly, there's a relation between geography and MS. The further away from the equator, the more common MS occurs. In Australia, MS is much more prevalent in areas like Tasmania than in Queensland. And while MS is not hereditary, there is an increased risk being seen with those having an immediate relative with MS. MS impacts different people in different ways and the impact on a person can also change over time. This interference of nerve signals between the brain and the spine can result in a variety of symptoms. No two people experience MS in the same way. The symptoms that are felt depend on where in the brain and the spinal cord those lesions develop. Now, while the list of possible symptoms is long, the MS Society of Australia has summarised them into five main areas. Muscle problems and motor control. The disruption of nerve signals can result in weakened muscles, especially the arms and legs. And this weakness can impact coordination, balance and functioning of those arms and legs. Muscle and lower back pain is often experienced as a result. For some, some may have experienced muscular spasms and tremors as well. Fatigue. Fatigue is one of the most common symptoms experienced and one that often has a large impact on the person. It's said that fatigue is one of the major causes of someone with MS leaving the workforce. And people with MS often need to come up with strategies to enable them to go about each day. Other neurological symptoms. Some people with MS may experience vertigo, may experience pins and needles, neuralgia, and some might have visual disturbances. Continence problems. Bladder issues such as incontinence, an inability to empty the bladder completely, and or reduced bladder capacity are common symptoms. 
Constipation is also somewhat common. Sometimes it's as the result of medications. Neuropsychological symptoms. Memory loss can sometimes occur with many struggling with the ability to concentrate. Changes in mood and emotion are also common related to both the nerve damage as well as in dealing with the challenges that MS presents. With such variability of symptoms in individuals, knowing how the disease would progress is difficult. The symptoms may appear mild in early days, however as time goes on symptoms may become increasingly severe. There are four main courses that the disease has been seen to take. With relapse remitting MS, Sufferers may have partial or total remission after an attack or a relapse. Remissions may last for months or for years while symptoms may worsen with each relapse or sometimes new symptoms appear. Most people with MS initially begin on this course. With secondary progressive MS, attacks and partial recoveries continue to occur but relapses become steadily progressive and are often superimposed on each other. More than half of those who start with relapse remitting MS will develop secondary progressive MS within about 10 years. Primary progressive MS. With this type, the onset is slow and the symptoms steadily worsen with a distinct lack of attacks, so symptoms tend not to remit. About 15% of those diagnosed have this form. Progressive relapsing MS is progressive from onset, but there are acute relapses. The periods between those relapses show continued disease progression. There are various treatment options to help those with MS in a number of areas. There is medications to reduce the risk of relapses and slow the progression of the disease. There's also treatment to manage specific symptoms, especially during a relapse. And then of course there's treatment to help improve and enhance life that help people overcome limitations they might start to face. The overall course of treatment depends on the person's type of MS and the symptoms they present. Disease modifying therapies aim to reduce the risk of relapses and slow disease progression. These generally take the form of an injected or a tablet medication in some form to reduce the disease activity in the nervous system. There's many types already available and more are being researched. If someone has an acute relapse, sometimes they rely on the use of steroid medications to control the severity of that attack, easing inflammation at the sites affected. These do treat only the symptoms, helping to ease the symptoms and reduce the length of a relapse, but they don't treat the disease itself. But thanks to the increased awareness of MS through things like the MS Readathon and the Gong Ride, there's more awareness and support for research for MS, and new treatment methods are continuing to be developed and trialled. Treatment for specific symptoms experienced can help both during a relapse and to help improve the quality of life during periods of remission. A combination of medication where that's appropriate, conventional treatments and complementary therapies can often work together to best ease symptoms. Bowen therapy is a very gentle form of body work. Small gentle precise moves are made on muscles, tendons, ligaments and nerves, triggering the body to begin a healing process. The entire body is influenced during a Bowen treatment through restoring balance in the autonomic nervous system. The Bowen moves prompt a shift from that stressed, sympathetic fight or flight mode to the parasympathetic rest and repair dominance. Bowen moves impact the body in a number of ways. Nerve receptors activated during treatment act to calm the body and mind and facilitate the body's ability to heal. There is a clear influence of Bowen moves along the body's fascia lines supporting muscle coordination, postural alignment, and the overall structural and functional integrity of the body. Bowen moves also impact the lymphatic system, providing support to the body's immune system. The treatment initiates relaxation during the session and changes that continue in the body for up to a week. Bowen therapy can complement conventional treatment to support the many symptoms experienced with MS. 
It can also complement some disease modifying treatments, helping people prepare for and recover from some of those therapies. For pain, muscle problems and motor control, while medication can support a number of muscle problems such as stiffness and tremors, physiotherapy is also great to help with exercises to help muscle weakness, coordination and balance. Bowen can also help those muscles through influencing the fascia, helping the body to stay in balance, supporting posture, gait and muscular aches and pains. Bowen therapy may also be able to help through reducing tremors and read another post I have on that about how Bowen has helped a central tremor. For fatigue, Bowen therapy has a history of helping fatigue related disorders, helping bring the body into balance, taking that body from the stressed fight or flight mode to rest and digest to help that body relax and function. As the body sleeps and functions more efficiently, Many feel improved energy and an ability to cope with daily tasks. Many other neurological symptoms can also be supported by Bowen therapy through its impact on nerve receptors in the fascia and the calming influence on the nervous system. Bowen has helped clients with vertigo and those with skin sensations. A recent non-MS client that was seeing me for back pain was also complaining of sensations in her fingertips. It felt like glass shards were constantly being pushed into the fingers and doctors were baffled, unable to diagnose or help. But the Bowen treatments through calming that nervous system significantly reduced the pain in the fingers and in the back um, as a lovely holistic side, side effect of that treatment for her back. In terms of continence problems, bladder and bowel problems are often treated through diet, medication, continence aids, or special exercises. However, Bowen therapy can also support bowel and bladder and incontinence issues as well. Helping to calm the body, sometimes in conjunction with specific moves, has had numerous clients comment how a simple Bowen treatment has often resulted in an evacuation within a couple of hours of treatment, as well as ongoing um, improved bowel function. Bowen is also known to support bladder issues, taking that body out of stress and supporting the kidney, bladder and pelvic areas has seen continence improvements in many. In terms of neuropsychological symptoms, depression, anxiety and stress can be supported by Bowen therapy in conjunction with counselling or other traditional support. Bowen gives gentle physical support, helping give more upright posture and support the body to allow breathing and allow the body to calm and move towards a more parasympathetic state. Now, Bowen therapy may also help the body when taking disease modifying treatments, helping to calm the nervous system and support the immune system. A client was preparing to begin Lamtrada treatment just over a year ago. That treatment requires two courses of treatment for five days a year apart. In the lead up to the first course, the client had three or four weekly Bowen sessions. Recovery after the Lamtrada treatment was much faster than he had expected. But in the lead up to the second course, there was only one Bowen treatment a few weeks before and recovery after the Lamtrada treatment was much slower with fatigue playing a major part in that recovery. A couple of Bowen sessions though helped that client to regain energy and reduce the muscular aches that he was experiencing. And one thing I've found in my experience with people with MS is despite the wide variety of symptoms that those have, there is a commonality I find. They all have such resilience and a positive attitude. I hope you've enjoyed learning about multiple sclerosis and how Bowen can help MS. Look forward to sharing my next blog with you soon. Bye.